Hi, I'm Jeremy Siegel. I'm a co-host of GBH's Morning Edition, and this is Get the Scoop. All right, question number one. This comes from at Lucy Cookies. Cook is, I-Z, or cookies. So Lucy, if you're watching, let us know how we should say it. So Lucy asks, how do new experiences or topics you cover on the show change your daily life or lifestyle habits? Number one, what I cover definitely changes the way I live. I love covering the tea, and I think because I love covering the tea, I've ended up riding the tea a lot. Way too much, honestly. It's funny that Lucy asked about garden topics. I am awful at growing plants. Did whale watching change my view on ocean life? It definitely did. It also changed my view on taking boats because it was kind of ridiculous to see how at least half of the people on my whale watching trip got pretty sick. Luckily, I wasn't one of them. This comes from Ed. He says, okay, since you have to be here a lot, what strategies do you have that help you keep a healthy relationship with Twitter? Keeping a healthy relationship with Twitter, I think is almost impossible. I think the best way I've tried to stay healthy while being on Twitter a lot is by staying away from Twitter whenever I can. I try to make hobbies where I'm able to disconnect. So I love running. I also love doing things like going camping and going hiking in places where I don't have service. So I try to force myself to log off. When people ask tough questions or criticize what we do on the show or something like that, I'm a big fan of always responding to people when I can. I think engaging is usually better for me than not. This is from at Beer Baron Homer. That's an awesome handle, Beer Baron Homer, I'm jealous. They say, I'd love to know the history behind the flying angel. Every year at the Fisherman's Feast in Boston's North End, a young girl who is part of the community there gets the honor of being the flying angel. She's hoisted up between two buildings, three stories high, and flies over the crowd during the finale of the Fisherman's Feast. I love this question. This has been happening for now 112 years. The question about what it looked like and what the harness looked like more than 100 years ago, exactly the same. What's it like flying through the streets? Really fun. Any accidents through the years? No accidents whatsoever. How do they get chosen? I think a family member has to be a part of the uh, committee that throws the fisherman's feast every year and then they vote on people. Next question. Are you willing to wear a mask in public to help protect kids with cancer or other vulnerabilities. Of course, I'm willing to wear a mask to help protect anybody and help make anybody more comfortable. Anytime I'm in a public space where I think someone could be at risk and I don't know about their risk, I try to wear a mask. Next question, this comes from at, at Nick D. Anderson. This is Nick Anderson, a fellow GBH employee who writes, Jeremy, I have some words about a transit map you posted. I tried to follow it and I've been lost for the past week. Please explain. I think a lot of people had a lot of words about this map. <laughs> I posted a map one morning that was of the MBTA's T route and just scribbled all over it on my phone and said that this is a map of what transit's gonna look like during the Orange Line shutdown. It got shared way too much. If anybody else did actually try any of the routes I put on that map, please let me know um, and you might hear from my lawyer afterwards. This is from Mazel Tov Cocktail. That's a good Twitter name, at A Fertig. They say, I wasn't gonna ask about the Elvis thing, but now I think I might ask, why? When I was a toddler, for an entire year of my life, I dressed as Elvis Presley every single day. I would wear these extravagant Elvis Vegas style outfits or I would wear a full suit. I wore this to preschool, I would slick back my hair. I looked pretty cool, I think. I would put on performances where I used a toilet plunger as a microphone. You can do anything but lay off my blue suede shoes. Until one day my family went on a trip to Graceland and my brother showed me Elvis's grave, which led to a little bit of an identity crisis. Next question, at Claudia Riley 11, this is my mom, writes, now that you're almost 28, are you still baffled that no one could guess what you were the Halloween when you were 10 and trick-or-treated as a quote, purple crowned Gwenon monkey? 
So you're probably wondering what the heck is a purple crown Gwenin monkey. I don't really know. I was a gymnast. I competed nationally in gymnastics until the beginning of uh, my freshman year of college. And I think I felt a sort of kinship with monkeys and the way that they swing and, and flip around. And I went to the Cincinnati Zoo. They had a crowned Gwenin monkey. I wanted to go as the crowned Gwenin monkey for Halloween. And my favorite color was purple. So I decided, why not go as a purple crowned Gwenin monkey? Apparently I was really disappointed that nobody knew what I was. So yes, mom, even though I'm almost 28 years old, I'm still baffled that nobody had any idea what a purple crowned Gwenin monkey was. This next question comes from Nick, one of our coworkers here at GBH. He writes, what is your song of the summer? So I have two songs of the summer, I'd say. One of them is this song called Bad Love. It's by the band Dead. Bad love is something I'd be proud of. This song is just like, it has such summer anthem vibes. My other choice for anthem of the summer is this old Italian song, Tu Vuo Fa L'Americano. I hope I'm saying that right. The one where they're like, L'Americano, L'Americano. At Emily Bach writes, how about some East Coast versus West Coast observational humor? Ooh, this is a dangerous one, Emily. So I've lived on both the East Coast and the West Coast. People who live on the East Coast and the West Coast pay no mind to the middle of the country, which is where I'm actually from. I remember when I first moved out to California and told people I was from Ohio, they were like, oh, yeah, that's like near M Missouri or, no, it's near, it's near Montana. No, it's near Minnesota. That's like the extent to which people know the middle of the country. I found that also to be true here on the East Coast. Next question, this one is from Joe Das at Ski the East Zero. They write favorite craft beer spot. So I, I'd say my number one craft beer spot so far in Boston, and I'm still exploring them, is Castle Island Brewing. This is in Southie. I love their beer. They got a bunch of beers that have lactose in them, which I, I like beers that have uh, some milk in them. Next question here, what do you do to keep your voice in good shape to be on the air every day? Honestly, my answer to this question, I hope that uh, my editor li isn't listening, N nothing. <laughs> I probably should do something. I have no tips or tricks that I do to take care of my voice. I guess drinking way too much coffee might be how I keep my voice sounding good in the morning. What time do you go to bed and wake up? How has this schedule impacted your life? This is a cruel question. So I go to bed, well, I try to go to bed at around 8 p.m. every night. That's more of a goal than a reality. And then I wake up at, I'm just gonna say it. I wake up at 2.45 a.m. every day. One big change that I've had to make to make the schedule work for me is nap time. I nap for sometimes an hour, sometimes even two hours. If I fall asleep in the middle of recording right now, don't blame me. This is a good one. Spill the tea on your co-host, Paris Alston. She is a big, and I mean like big fan of Weird Al. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. She actually invited me to a Weird Al concert one time, which I regret not going to, but next time Weird Al is in town, Paris and I are gonna go see him. All right, last question. This is a good one. Since this series is called Get the Scoop, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? All right, this is a little bit boring, but it's a classic, chocolate chip. And I am gonna have a scoop of chocolate chip while I explain to you why it's the best choice for an ice cream flavor. So every time people go to an ice cream shop, you know, they'll, I'm gonna get a big scoop here. They'll go around like looking at all the flavors, trying out different ones, holding up the line, which I don't like. And then sometimes people are disappointed with what they end up choosing. You can never go wrong with chocolate chip. This is always so good. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jeremy Siegel, and this is Get the Scoop. You can do anything but lay off of my blue suede shoes.